She's a research and Manush Movahedi from uh, Definity, or she was my uh, former postdoc. And the only reason that I'm presenting this work is that unfortunately neither of them was able to get a visa for Canada. So uh, that's kind of unfortunate. So I'll try to give you my perspective on the talk. Uh, but a lot of the inspiration and the hard work on this paper was uh, from my co-authors. So maybe I'll have to defer some of your questions uh, for them. But let's see how it goes. Uh, so what are we going to talk about here? We'll be talking about uh, more efficient and scalable consensus. That's kind of my view uh, on uh, this uh, line of works. Uh, so, and in particular, in the context of blockchains, we will be using consensus in order to provide uh, storage for data uh, that provides safety and liveness. So safety that uh, we don't lose the data if some of the machines fails, and liveness that if we need the data, we know how to access it. So in this setting, we cannot rely on a single machine to store all of the data. We need to have uh, multiple replicas uh, to provide resiliency. And in particular, we will need a consensus protocol in order for this replica to agree on a common state of the data. So uh, the problem of... Uh, uh, sorry. The problem of uh, Byzantine agreement uh, or consensus uh, is a long uh, standing problem. A long time ago in the 80s, this problem was defined in the work of Peace, Shostak, and Lamport. And basically, the question that they were asking is if we have n nodes and we know that at most t of them are Byzantine, how do they agree on a common value? Uh, so in this work, they also uh, show that if we have if we have a way to select a trusted leader who will broadcast or who will send the uh, value to all of the nodes, we can achieve this consensus. But the hardness of achieving consensus is kind of realizing this functionality. So what do we know in terms of what we can achieve in consensus? If we have a common PKI, we know that we can uh, tolerate up to half of the nodes in the network being malicious. Without a PKI, uh, we can uh, tolerate only up to one third. And the other important characteristics when we talk about consensus is what is the communication channel that we assume. So if we have a synchronous net network, then we are gaining the setting of uh, up to one half uh, malicious nodes. Uh, and in the asynchronous setting, uh, we are back to the one third uh, faulty nodes that we can tolerate. An interesting thing is that if we are in a synchronous setting and we want to tolerate up to one third, we need to have randomized algorithms. So this is kind of the classical uh, definition of consensus. Uh, so what about uh, this setting of blockchain consensus that has been the more prevalent thing that we've been thinking about since 2008? So uh, one uh, distinguishing feature is that in this setting, we're thinking about agreement with total ordering because the uh, agreement on every new incoming transaction is in a sense dependent on our history of what we have received up to this point. Also, uh, another distinguishing feature is that we, in the settings of blockchains, we have a sparsely connected network, uh, which means that we're thinking about P2P communication rather than communication between all parties in the network. We also would like to uh, maintain open membership, which means that the participants in this protocol are not a fixed number of parties, but parties come and go. So we would like to be able to uh, handle churn in the participants of the protocol. So this is the setting that we will be also thinking uh, for our construction. So now if we want to take, uh, again, a look at uh, Bitcoin, and what is one kind of conclusion that we can draw from it is that uh, this is a, a system that aims at full replication, essentially that every party uh, in the network uh, will be having a view of the whole ledger. And in a sense, this system is sacrificing scalability for total decentralization. Uh, uh, because of this uh, aim to, that every party has a consistent view of the whole ledger, the communication and computation required in this uh, protocol is quadratic, scales quadratically with the number of parties. And in particular, uh, one work of Decker and Wattenhofer that studied the Bitcoin protocol showed that a typical two megabyte message needs to be propagated to at least 90% uh, of the network. And if the network is 4,000 nodes, this would take uh, approximately 50 seconds. So we will be aiming for something better in terms of latency. So 
if we want to ask how much redundancy is really needed, how are we going to trade off this scal scalability versus decentralization? So if we think about traditional consensus protocols that were before the time of uh, blockchain uh, constructions, and the most efficient one in practice is PBFT, the, the implementations of this protocol kind of scale up to 100 replicas. If we look at more recent uh, uh, paradigms like Bitcoin and Ethereum, they are computing more than 4,000 replicas. So we will be looking for this trade-off between scalability and decentralization. And a main approach in order to achieve this is coming from the concept of sharding-based consensus. So in this setting, we will not be asking every node in the network to participate in the consensus, but rather we'll be electing a committee uh, of a much smaller size than the whole size of the network that will be acting on behalf of all the other nodes. And in particular, we'll be also generating multiple committees. And we will be sharding or splitting the ledger between these committees. So the ideal goal will be that our throughput will be increasing linearly with the number of nodes in the network. So this is the main idea that we'll be using also in our construction rapid chain. And in particular, in rapid chain, we'll be aiming for full sharding. And what I mean by this is sharding in terms of communication, storage, and computation. And this distinguishes our work from previous works in, in the fact that previous works were sharding at most in two of these directions, either storage or com computation or uh, communication and computation. So our work is the first work that proposes this in all three directions. So, if we are thinking about, about construction uh, based on this sharding uh, paradigm, what are the main challenges that we need to think how to address? So I was telling you that we will be selecting these committees uh, that will be acting on behalf of the whole network and will be sharding the uh, blockchain. But we have to come up with an efficient sampling procedure that will guarantee that uh, in each of these committees, we will have uh, roughly the same fraction of uh, malicious nodes as the distribution in the whole network. And we need to do this efficiently. Since I was telling you that we'll be aiming to uh, handle churn or uh, changing of the number of parties or the identities of the parties of the network, we have to have an efficient way to reconfigure uh, our system in order to protect against civil attacks where the adversary is trying to slowly corrupt the whole network. So once we have the sharding or splitting between different shards maintaining pieces of the blockchain, we have to think about cross-sharding verification when one uh, transaction might need to, in order to verify the, the transaction, uh, you might need to get information from different committees in your net network uh, on the incoming inputs. And last but not least, we'll need to think about decentralized bootstrapping or how do we create this initial uh, set of uh, committees that we will need, or uh, we initialize parameters for all the cryptographic primitives, primitives that we'll be using. So uh, let me tell you what are the contributions of our work. So we propose the first full sharding uh, uh, blockchain protocol, and which realizes this concept that we have sublinear communication per transaction in the network. Uh, if we look at our particular uh, consensus protocols that were that run in, in, within each committee, we achieve six to ten. Uh, times improvement over the best known construction for intercommittee consensus, uh, which is PBFT. And if we want to talk about concrete numbers, we have a high throughput, which is about 7,300 7, transactions per second, and low latency, about 8.7 seconds per transaction. We have high resiliency, so we can maintain up to one third of uh, 40 nodes in the network where the most relevant previous work was uh, maintaining or tolerating up to one fourth of corrupt nodes. We have a new provable reconfiguration protocol that uh, handles the churn in the network based on the Cuckoo rule. And we improve the decentralization bootstrapping, which refers to the initial construction of our starting committees. Uh, the network model that we assume for our construction uh, assumes end nodes that will have public and secret key, which will serve as their identities. We'll have M committees, which will be the shards in our uh, construction. And we'll be assuming P2P network where communication is based on gossiping. Uh, 
our model is not fully asynchronous. We assume bounded message delay of a particular uh, delta, and we choose delta to be about 600 milliseconds, uh, which was based on our uh, experimentation with uh, gossiping an 80-byte message within a committee of size 250. I want to point out that this is not fully a synchronous model, but this is basically the model that all previous works have adopted as well. So this is an equal, uh, equal direction of comparison. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we will uh, tolerate up to a third Byzantine nodes at any moment in our system. So in terms of the churn, uh, we assume slowly adaptive adversary. This was a notion defined in the work of uh, Pass and Xi uh, in 2016, where the percentage of, no, of new nodes that the adversary can corrupt in each epoch was a parameter. And what we chose to maintain in our system or to support in our system was about 5% uh, churn in, e in every epoch, where an epoch for us is 24 hours. How did we choose this 5%? Is we looked at what uh, happened in the Bitcoin network. If you look in a 24-hour period in the Bitcoin network, the churn is about 0.2%. Uh, and even across 90-day period, still the churn is about 3.5%. Uh, so that's how we chose our number. So if we look at high level of our protocol, it starts with a bootstrapping period where we establish the starting number of committees. And then it proceeds in steps that consist of consensus, where in each consensus we have multiple iterations where new blocks are added to the chain and committees agree on these new blocks. And then we have a re reconfiguration uh, phase that allows new nodes to join the system. So our protocol starts with the first epoch which bootstraps the system by establishing a reference committee. And this reference committee uh, will be uh, responsible for generating epoch randomness for each epoch of the execution. And it will also create the reconfiguration uh, block, which will contain the identities of all the participants in the network in a part particular epoch. What are we going to use this epoch randomness for? Uh, in the first epoch, this will be in order to select the sharding committees that will maintain the different shards in our ledger. Uh, in the following epochs, it will be used to create challenges for the new nodes joining the system and in a whole, as a whole to real, for the reorganization of the uh, committees. Uh, our construction uses the UTX model, uh, which is the unspent transaction uh, output. And in particular, if a user wants to submit a new transaction to the system, it submits it to a random node in the system. And then uh, this node, uh, which is part of a particular committee, will be uh, transferring this transaction to the committee who will be responding to maintain this shard. Uh, the shard in which this transaction will be recorded, and in particular, the shard will be identified by the ID of the output committee from this UTXO. Uh, so the communication that we will need to do from this cross-shard verification, because we will need to contact the committees that are responsible for the input for this transaction, will be done with our uh, inter-committee routing protocol, which uses uh, the algorithm called Kademlia from Mayamonkov and the Maziers. Uh, this is a uh, uh, peer-to-peer information system uh, that allows us for, for efficient communication that allows every node to know only logarithmic number of the other peers in the network. So, uh, what about the bootstrapping protocol? So we have a uh, construction that s allows us to select our sharding committees using a uh, sampling graph. Uh, so, um, and in our construction, we improve the analysis in terms of the size that we need to have for the committees in, or in order to minimize the failure probability, where failure probability is the event that we construct a committee where the number of uh, malicious nodes are more than what's tolerated by the intercommittee consensus protocol. In particular, uh, we will run consensus in each of the committees that uh, tolerates up to one half uh, faulty nodes. Uh, and the higher resiliency our committee has, then the smaller size of the committee we need. In particular, you will see in this graph that uh, our failure probability decreases much faster with the size of our, our committees than previous works. So the, our uh, 
intra committee uh, consensus will be based uh, uh, on the idea of gossiping uh, pro uh, block across all of the members of the committee. Uh, and we'll be maintaining up to one half malicious nodes in the in the committee. Uh, we'll be using the information dispersal uh, protocol that was introduced by Rabin in 89 with some improvements that came from other work and also from us. So the basic concept is that the, no, the, the message that we will be propagating across all of the nodes in the committee will be encoded using our erasure uh, coding mechanism. And then we will, in this way, we will reduce the number of chunks from the message that we'll need to send in each node of the uh, committee. Uh, kind of the, one of the main insights is that we will be running the consensus on the hash of this message that we are propagating in the committee rather than the size of the whole message. So this erasure code will introduce some overhead in terms of the size of the message that needs to be propagated. But the bottom line will be that we managed to reduce the total latency by 5.3 times compared with previous works, or the gossiping within a committee is about 2.6 uh, seconds. Uh, so what about handling churn in our protocol? As I mentioned to you, uh, when we have a new node joining the network, we will need to assign it to one of the sharding committees that we use to split our network into. In particular, we will be using the uh, cuckoo rule, uh, which was introduced in the context of distributed uh, hash tables, which was saying that when a new node comes, we will choose at random one of the committees for this node to join, and then we will evict some of the nodes from this committee to some of the other committees. One modification that we need, we made on this rule is that we split our committees in terms of their size. So we sort them in terms of their size. And when the new node comes, we assign it to one uh, of the committees in the bigger half. And we evict nodes only from that committee to some of the committees in the smaller half. What this allowed us to do is to uh, maintain uh, the security guarantees in terms of how many faulty nodes we'll have in each of the committees. But at the same time, we were able to maintain more stable sizes of the committees in this, in this manner. OK, so let me tell you a bit about our experimental setup. So imp we implemented our protocol in Go. Uh, we assumed the following constraints on our network, which were, again, inspired by the constraints in the real Bitcoin network. So we assumed la uh, link latency of 100 milliseconds. And we assumed bound, bounded bandwidth of the nodes of 20 megabits. Uh, our block size was uh, 2 megabytes, which allowed us to contain uh, 4,096 blocks uh, uh, transactions per block. Uh, in terms of the corruption model, we assume that 49% of the leaders equivocate in the same iteration. So what happens, what this means is that uh, with almost half of the probability, the leader that you choose for the consensus protocol will be faulty and you will need to restart. Uh, again, uh, up to half of the members of the committee are uh, allowed to be malicious. And since uh, not all of the committees participate in all of the gossiping protocols, about 32% of the total uh, population of the uh, network will be faulty in each of the executions. So what is the throughput that we uh, achieve with our protocol? Uh, here is a graph that shows how the number of transactions handled per second increases with the increase of the size of the total number of nodes in our network. And in the brackets below, we show for a particular network size, what is the size of the each committee that we need in order to guarantee that uh, the number of malicious nodes in the committee will be between one third and uh, one half. Uh, these smaller committee sizes were due to our tighter analysis of this sampling protocol that we uh, used for the committee generation. And you also see that we managed to scale the number of uh, uh, throughput uh, kind of linearly with the size of our network. If you want to see what is the latency for our protocol, we have two measurements, which is one of them is confirmation latency from the point a transaction is uh, added to the network to the point it is confirmed. So this is not eventual uh, consensus like uh, other proof of work uh, uh, construction. This is uh, uh, immediate consensus uh, because we are using these classical consensus protocols within a committee. So this uh, confirmation latency is about nine seconds, and the user perceived latency, which 
uh, increases because we need to batch several user transactions in a single block. And we also have to wait until this node becomes leader in its consensus protocol. So the total user perceived latency is about 70 seconds. In comparison, in, blockchain, in Bitcoin, you will need to wait about 60 minutes for confirmation. How did we choose the block size for our uh, construction? Uh, so this was a trade-off between the throughput in the system and the latency. So here you see graphs uh, between the block size and the latency and the block size and the transactions per second. So our reference point was that uh, in a Visa transaction, it takes about four seconds for confirmation. So we chose uh, two megabytes uh, it's block size, which kind of trades off uh, Seem, seem the best trade-off between latency and throughput. And finally, let me show you a bit of a uh, comparison with the two most relevant previous work. This was Elastico and OmniLedger. These are two, two previous works that do sharding, but only on two of the three dimensions that I showed. So you see the storage essentially is a reflection of how much you shard. If you see 1 over 16, this means that we have 16 uh, sharding committees, so we are splitting our ledger across 16 committees. Elastico didn't shard at all storage. OmniLedger was allowing you to, sh to shard storage. However, uh, OmniLedger wasn't sharding communication, so as you were increasing the transaction per second, also the latency was increasing in this protocol, while for us, uh, if we're increasing the transaction per second, as long as we are increasing the size of the network, our latency uh, time remained more or less the same. Uh, so also uh, the time for failure uh, refers to this uh, sampling of the committees and what is the probability that you actually sample a committee that contains uh, more malicious nodes than what your intercommittee consensus can handle. So with this, I think I am kind of out of time. So I'll conclude. Thank you, and I'll take some questions. You have some questions? Uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, one simple question. Uh, will you open source it, or can I get a code for academic purpose? Uh, so that's a bit complicated question because it's part of the visa research. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. Maybe maybe this question is for uh, our visa author. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay, thank yeah. you so much. Um, your throughput and latency numbers were presumably with corruption turned on. Uh, what speed do you get if you turn it off? Uh, so our latency, whether you have corrupted or non-corrupted nodes, are is the same. In particular, the fact that we were assuming that half of the time you will be failing for selecting of the leader. Uh, this was uh, so we didn't we didn't uh, I don't have numbers that test w where you don't fail on the on the leader, so you don't have corrupted parties. We only ran the evaluations uh, where the corruptions were on. <coughs> 